Hey everybody, Richard Pie Guy here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Raspberry Pi shortage. So if you're not yet aware, there's a massive shortage with Raspberry Pi's products right now. So basically, you can't get them anywhere at the price that you could get them for a couple months ago. And in most cases, they're totally dried up to the point where you can't get them at all without spending about four times more than you would have paid a couple months ago. So this all started happening about the end of August, uh, into September, we started dealing with this on a, a much larger scale. We started to experience minor delays and we, we sensed that there was going to be some manufacturing issues and obviously delays with receiving products if we had ordered them or uh, finding the products at all. But it definitely increased, I believe, end of August into September. I did a video a couple months ago kind of addressing this as it started to become a major issue. But what ended up happening was we kind of went through different uh, ups and downs with the process. So you were able to get them after a little while. I think it was maybe two months of them being really hard to come by. And then all of a sudden Amazon had them again. They were a little bit more expensive than they used to be maybe anywhere from three to $10 difference in price, depending on which Raspberry Pi product you were getting. Um, we were able to get them from the retailers that work direct with Raspberry Pi Foundation again. There were limitations on how many you could buy. I think you were only able to buy one computer board at a time, which is normal. I mean, there was you know, issues like that with limitations on toilet paper rolls and um, meat and stuff like that during this pandemic. So that's just one of the things we, we've grown accustomed to seeing now. Uh, because unfortunately people do go and kind of hoard products and then price gouge later on. So unfortunately that's an issue that did happen with Amazon and I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but I wanted to kind of go over the, um, the history of this issue and where it all stemmed from. So the cause of this is obviously the COVID-19 pandemic, which we've been dealing with for two years now, uh, at the time of this video anyways. And we're gonna be dealing with it for a bit longer too. It seems like we're certainly making strides to get back to normal, but um, it does seem like we're constantly a couple steps behind this awful virus at all times. Obviously we've uh, made major strides, but with new strands coming out and stuff like that, we're definitely dealing with a lot. And I feel like most businesses and industries right now still aren't back to normal and probably won't be for a long period of time still. You know, people still, uh, while we are going out, we aren't going out and doing, you know, all the stuff we used to be doing or as frequently. People aren't spending money like they used to. We're all pretty much still dealing with this pandemic in one way or another. So what caused this problem was initially Raspberry Pi makes their products and, you know, they sell them at a certain rate and they're used to that. When everything got shut down, we all pretty much went home and nobody was working for a period of time. And obviously different countries and uh, even different states in our country here in the United States dealt with this differently. Some people experienced, you know, lockdowns early on. Some didn't experience them really at all. We had mask mandates in some states, some states didn't. It was just completely different state to state and certainly country to country. So um, industries though pretty much dealt with this all with at one point or another manufacturing had to be halted and every all the workers went home for a period of time so nothing new was being manufactured so with a product like Raspberry Pi's products they assumed that the demand would go down because now people are home they're not working they're not spending money like they used to we're probably going to see a decline in sales but now what ended up happening though was people started learning about the Raspberry Pi products and all the amazing things you could do with them. And let's take retro gaming, for example. That's predominantly what I use the Raspberry Pi for, and specifically the Raspberry Pi for 4 gigabyte RAM. Um, people started realizing, hey, I can get this $55, at least for that particular Raspberry Pi product, $55 computer board, and end up with basically a gaming console that has thousands upon thousands of retro video games on it. For $55 just for the computer portion of that, um, is a pretty sweet deal. So when you're home and you're not working and you're trying to fill your time now, that's a pretty sweet thing to get your hands on. So whether you're going to use the Raspberry Pi product for gaming or for coding or for any of the other amazing projects you could use the Raspberry Pi product for, their sales went through the roof. So now they have massive sales. They're selling you know, tens upon thousands of Raspberry Pis and they're no longer manufacturing them. So their stock inventory is just depleting very rapidly to the point where eventually they run out of inventory. So what ended up happening was their inventory obviously declined and they were selling these like crazy. 
And eventually they did go back to manufacturing, but what ended up happening was they were so far behind, we started to experience these delays when we would order them or um, you know, they were just drying up in certain marketplaces altogether. So they did start making them and that's why we actually saw that we started seeing that inventory was going away and then it would come back for a period of time then it would go away again. And obviously price fluctuations occurred during this process, but uh, where they're at right now is now, while workers are back in the factories and they're ready to manufacture these products, now it's hard to find the components that are used to actually build these computer boards and different products. So it started with one thing and led to another thing, and now they're still dealing with uh, massive delays and restrictions on you know, how much they can produce at any uh, given time, now because of the components being you know, really hard to find. So. It's a tough situation for pretty much any industry, but with this particular one, they're pretty much at the mercy of these products that they need in order to keep manufacturing moving forward. So now where we're at as the you know potential buyers for these products, they're really hard to come by again. And while we did see this before and we saw that it only lasted a short period of time, now it's so hard to get the components to make these computer boards they're anticipating this is going to last a much longer period of time. So what also ended up happening during this process is a lot of people through Amazon went out, they kind of hoarded all of these computer boards that were available for a period of time. So Amazon never had a limitation as to how many of these you could buy at one time, like most of the retailers that work direct with Raspberry Pi. So you could go on Amazon when they became available again, and yes, you were paying maybe five to $10 more than they were a few months before, but you can go on there and order 25 of them if you wanted. So I think a lot of people ended up doing that and they kind of hoarded them. And now that everything is really hard to come by or quite honestly, impossible to come by, you're starting to see them popping up on eBay and some of these other marketplaces where individuals can sell their inventory and they can sell it at a ridiculous price. So now where you could have bought you know, six months ago, a Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte RAM uh, computer board for $55. We're seeing them for 120, 125. Sometimes I've seen some for $155 and people have actually bought them at that price because, you know, they just want to get them and get them now. They'll pay three, four times the price to be able to get them when they want them. So it's a tough situation when you have people doing stuff like that. It's unfair for you know the average person that just wants to get their hands on one of these computer boards and get started with a project or um, you know retro gaming or whatever they want to do. So it's definitely frustrating, and you can still find them right now if you're willing to pay more money for them. Now Amazon has a limited amount of these currently. Again, at the time of this video, so it may not be relevant depending on when you're watching this, but. Um, they're currently going for direct from Raspberry Pi, I got it right here on my screen, $112.95. So that's more than double what they were going for again a couple months before. And now Raspberry Pi Foundation did make a statement saying that they only upped the price of one of their computer board products and it was by I think 10 bucks or so. So that listing that I mentioned is listed as the Raspberry Store. So I'm not sure if that Raspberry Store is the Raspberry Pi Foundation site or selling store on Amazon's website, or if it's one of the retailers that they work directly with. But I can see that they have 15,624 uh, positive reviews. So that's a massive amount of sales to have on Amazon for it to be a retailer. So it leads me to believe that I do believe that that is the Raspberry Pi's um, official store on Amazon. Um, so that's double the price from what they were selling for a few months ago. So to make a statement saying that, hey, we've only upped the price on one product so far by five to $10, I forget exactly what it was. I think it was $10 though. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wild statement to make when we have it right on our screen here on Amazon, $112.95 for the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 2019 quad core 64 bit Wi-Fi Bluetooth, four gigabyte RAM in parentheses. That is the title. Um, for that product if you want to look it up just to see what it's priced at, you know, depending on when you're watching this video. But that's, again, more than double the price. Looks to me with the amount of positive ratings on just that product alone. And it was, again, 15,624 positive reviews there. I definitely think that's the Raspberry Pi's uh, official store on Amazon. So, you know, that's pretty much where we're at in terms of prices. And, you know, I kind of get upping the prices. I mean, I think that's a little bit much to up it by, but 
you know, if you want to combat people going in and buying up what little inventory you do have available and then just flipping the price on their end, you know, you kind of do have to make it to the point where, hey, this is too expensive for us to really buy and hoard and then make money on. Um, but at the same time, I don't really think that it is because I've seen people paying, um, you know, f almost $50 more than that price that's available on Amazon on eBay, you know, when it isn't available on Amazon. So it's confusing and it's unfortunate that if you want a Raspberry Pi 4 right now, you really have to shell out a good chunk of change to get that, um, especially if you want it in a, um, you know, specific time frame. So now I want to discuss what we can expect in the future. Now, Raspberry Pi has made statements kind of addressing these delays and issues with manufacturing. And basically what they've said is they expect to deal with these issues throughout 2022. So we're not even at the time of this video, we're not even into 2022 yet. We're in the last week of 2021. So we're going to be dealing with this for a long period of time. It's not going to be a quick turnaround. It's not going to be, hey, in three months, we're going to be able to manufacture you know, a million Raspberry Pi products and be able to put them out the door and we'll all be back to normal. This is going to go on for the majority of the coming year. So unfortunately, I think that the fluctuation on price here is just going to be all over the place because I've seen this price change now in the last three weeks probably 15 times or so. And if this is the Raspberry Pi store, they're changing the price on their end as well. So I get it. Things cost different prices at different times. There's a fluctuation in the supply line as well. So basically, we're all just along for a really wild ride, probably for all of 2022. So not to jump into another topic here, but Raspberry Pi Foundation did also talk about putting out another version of the Raspberry Pi 4 and moving on to a Raspberry Pi 5 as well. That I would say is pretty much off the table at this point if they're not even able to keep up with the demands that they have on their current product lines. They're certainly maybe trying to develop future product lines for the future, but I do not see any of that happening. You're not going to release new products when you cannot even keep up with the demand for what you currently have available. So it's one of those situations that's really tough for everybody involved. I feel for the consumer. I also feel for the manufacturer and creator of these products too. So I just wanna kind of put this all this information together today for you guys, uh, because all this information is out there and available. Most of what I'm telling you guys is direct from Raspberry Pi Foundation's website and um, different statements that they've made over the last couple months regarding this unfortunate issue with uh, the product availability. But there's no like one place where you can get all this information. It's been you know, a couple articles here, a couple interviews there over the last couple months. So I've kind of just pieced all that information together to give you guys an idea as to what we can expect in the future. And if you're not already familiar with the situation we're in, exactly what you would expect right now if you went out and tried to find a Raspberry Pi product. So that's gonna do it for today. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comments section. Always happy to answer questions and interact with you guys any way I possibly can, but that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button for me. Be sure to subscribe to the Retro Pie Guy YouTube channel. And I will be doing some future videos on this as the situation changes with this process for obtaining Raspberry Pi's products. So again, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching.